Hello everyone, Art Burns here, wishing you well today. I hope that wherever you are, the weather is as nice outside and it is also nice inside your body. And if it's not, please understand, just try to remember that just like the weather outside your body, the weather inside your body is always impermanent, okay? There's nothing fixed, there's nothing static, there's nothing, you know, stationary about it. Everything is constantly moving, it's constantly changing, it's constantly evolving. And so when it, you know, if you feel like you're not having having a great day today that's going to pass, okay, whether it's an emotional thing, a physical thing, uh, a thought-based thing, or, or it's just simply weather thing, you know, it will always pass. And so I want you to try to remember that, all right? And to that point, what I want to do today is I want to kind of get back a little bit to basics about stress reduction, right? Um, as you know, listening to some of these videos, you know, it's all about stress reduction when it comes to my work, you know, that, that's what I'm, I'm really, you know, kind of focused on because, you know, you know, stress has a way when stress enters our body right what we do is we enter into a survival mode of our body right and and when we're in this survival mode right not only the physical attributes of it right the 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 blood pressure increase the uh, the heart rate increase the the respiratory system increase all these things get jacked up in our body right because you know we're trying to survive you know our body is sending blood and oxygen into the extremities of the body so that it can survive it can fight or it can fee, uh, flee whatever it is that, that's attacking it, right? And, and as I've mentioned here before, you know, unfortunately, your body doesn't know, nor does your brain know the, the difference between a thought about something that might be frightening you, right? A bill that's due or, a, or, or the, the uncertainty of sitting at home for now another couple of weeks. We have no idea when this is going to end and these kind of things. Your body doesn't know the difference between those thoughts and emotions that are causing the stress response and an actual attack, right? So that's why the stress response happens the same way with your thoughts and emotions as it does if something is actually frightening you in the real world, okay? In other words, your body doesn't know the difference between you being chased by a tiger and you having the thoughts of something else that might be scaring you in your life. It literally has no idea of the difference. And so it reacts in the same way. That's why you can be sitting at your desk today worried about, you know, the, the quarantine that we're in, or you could be worried about, you know, bills that need to be paid, or you can be worried about, you know, uh, uh, work deadlines and things like that. And your body is going to react physically in the same way it would as if a, a cheetah entered your house and entered your office to, to come and eat you, right? It's literally the same thing, okay? And, and, and the problem with this is that, you know, or I mean, it's not a problem if, if there's an actual cheetah chasing us, right? But the problem if it's, there's not a cheetah chasing us is that this, you know, we go into this survival mode, right? And when we're in the survival mode, that means that Every decision we're going to make, every thought that we have, every uh, sensation we have, every you know action we take, every decision we make, like I said, it all is in the service of survival. Okay, so so that is not always a good thing, right? Because what that means is that what it is not is it is not creative. It is not dynamic executive contemplation. It is not uh, problem solving. It is not compassion. It is not. You you know, um, you know, just like in your body, it is not your cells are not, you know, dividing in the same way when you're when you're in the stress response as, as when you're in the growth response, right? You're in survival mode or you're in growth mode, right? In growth mode all your your systems are working the way they should be working your cells are dividing and duplicating themselves and and doing all these happy beautiful cellular things that they do in survival mode they're not doing that and the same goes true with your emotions the sensations of your body and your thoughts right all of these things are going to be affected and they're all going to go into the survival mode of your body of of, of your experience right and so so again what this does is this limits us right this limits us from from the creative problem solving. This limits us from the, the, you know, the desires that we have in our lives. It limits us, uh, you know, in the terms of our, of our reproduction of, of, you know, you know, you know, not only on a cellular level, but, but on a thought level and an emotional level as well. And so, and so unfortunately, you know, 77% of American adults <laughs> live in this survival mode, okay, chronically. Every day they get into the survival mode. And, and this means that 
that 77% of Americans every day, and this is before coronavirus, by the way. So, so at this point, we're probably in the 90 percentile somewhere, you know, 95, maybe 99% of American adults are feeling chronic stress every day. And I don't mean to laugh about it. It's, it's not funny when you're, when you're stuck in it. But, but my point is that, you know, that, that we all get into these places. And when we get there chronically, number one, it's not good for our bodies, right? Like to be in a, a state of hyper arousal, like your, your blood pressure, your heart rate, your, your you know, respiratory system, and all these things being jacked up like that every single day, your body's not meant for that. And eventually you're going to break down and you're going to experience illnesses as a result of this, right? But even more importantly, perhaps than that, is that your mind is not primed for living. You know, you're not primed to thrive. You cannot be optimized to thrive and survive at the same time. It's one or the other, folks. And, and unfortunately, most of us, like I said, 77% of us under normal circumstances are living in survival mode, which means that we're not primed, we're not optimized to survive, okay? Which means that we're not optimized for happiness, right? And we're not optimized for health, we're not optimized for compassion, we're not optimized for all the things that make us, you know, human, the, the things that make humans wonderful beings, right? And so what's the answer, right? I know I've just told you some stuff that you probably already know. So what's the answer, right? The answer is to, to get our bodies to, to get out of this survival mode, right? Now, how do we do that, right? Now, again, remember, the survival mode is, is, you know, happens because your body feels fear, okay? Your, your, your mind, your brain, and your body feel fear, right? Now, whether that's the fear of a, of a cheetah coming around this garage here on me right now, or it's the fear of a, of a, a financial issue, or a, or a social issue, or a romantic issue, or a health issue, right? Like, like thinking about, you know, um, you know, do I have coronavirus? You know, do I have COVID-19? You know, is that, is that cough that I felt? Is this the first sign of, of COVID-19? What's going to happen to me after that? You know, we start getting into those kind of patterns of thoughts and that's where your your brain the the fear center of your brain snaps into the stress response because it feels that it's under attack again it doesn't know the difference between a cheetah and the thought of a cheetah or the thought of whatever else it might be right and so so how do we get ourselves out of that place right if we're you know again if there's a cheetah there then you don't want to get out of that place right if there's a cheetah there you want your blood pressure your heart rate your respiratory system you want all those things because those are tools that are going to help you survive right cortisol in that case is your best friend right but when you're sitting at your desk cortisol can be your worst enemy right and again it can be literally killing you every single day right so so the you know the the way out of this right the the way to to you know sort of you know come you know to 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 get yourself out of this survival mode and into uh, into the the thrive mode, right? Which is you know the, the fight or flight is the stress mode of your body, right? The the opposite of that is called rest and digest, right? It's it, it's kind of getting our body back into the place where it's supposed to be. Your your you know blood pressure is normal, your heart rate is normal, your your respiratory system is nice and calm. You're breathing, breathing from your belly as opposed to your chest. You're breathing calmly. You're breathing deeply. You're feeling good, right? And everything is moving the way it's supposed to move, right? And so how do we get from that one to the other? How do we get from survival mode into thrive mode, right? And the, the answer to that is simply, it, it can be as simple as just aligning our mind with our body, okay? Because, you know, your body is right here. Like as I'm sitting here, my body is in this chair, in this backyard. I feel safe. You know, there was just a hawk above me for a moment. So I had a little moment of like, whoa, what's going on here? You know, but, but other than that, you know, I don't, there's no cheetahs, there's no bears, you know, there's no lightning that's going to strike me. There's no hail that's going to, you know, hurt me. You know, I feel safe, right? My body feels safe, right? But now sitting here, my mind could be anywhere, right? I could be thinking about the bills. I could be thinking about my, you know, social situation, my romantic situation or my health situation, right? Those are the big four. And I could be thinking about any of those things at any given time, right? So, so that is, that's where we get into the problem, right? When we start thinking about all those different things, again, your body and your mind doesn't know the difference between one of those things that scares you and hail or lightning or dive bombing hawks or whatever it might be or bears sneaking up on you, right? Your body doesn't know the difference. So the key is to get your mind 
into the same place that your body is, where you feel safe, right? Like my body, again, feels safe right now. There's nothing that I can sense that is a danger to my body. So as long as I can get my mind into where my body is, I will be free from these fear-based thoughts and emotions and therefore free from the stress response, right? I will stay in, in growth mode, in, in thrive mode rather than in survival mode, right? Now, it can be very simple, right? How do we get ourselves into our body? In fact, it's always very simple. It can also be very easy is what I should say. Now you see this t-shirt that I have, right? It says breathe, right? And that's the key, right? Like breathing by focusing on our breath. If you look at the, uh, the tagline of this shirt, it says your life depends on it. It's, it's a um, uh, 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 kind of a, 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 a twist on John Kabat-Zinn's uh, quote. I'm sure that the makers of the shirt didn't want to copyright any copyright infringements or anything. Anything. Uh, but John Kabat-Zinn has this great quote. He says, uh, he says, breathe as though your life depends on it, right? And the idea behind that is, of course, your life does depend on breathing, right? You could go weeks without food. You could go days without water, but you can't go more than a couple of minutes without fresh oxygen coming into your brain before you experience irreparable da brain damage. So, so what he's saying there is breathe as though your life depends on it, which means notice your breath right? Pay attention to your breath, right? Because the thing is that as we're breathing and as we sense into our breath, as we pay attention to the breath as it's happening, we're automatically bringing our body, our mind rather, into our body. And we're bringing ourselves into this present moment. And when we do that, the thoughts of the bank account, the thoughts of the, the coronavirus, the thoughts of the, the social issues, the romantic issues, they just kind of go. They do their thing, right? They're not going to stop them you know there's no stopping them right <laughs> but but there's there's not paying attention to them and the way that you don't pay attention to those is by paying attention to something like your breath okay the other thing that works is your five senses okay if I pay attention to the the feeling of the of my feet as they sit on this grass right now it will perform the same function I can pay attention to the things I hear I can pay attention to the things I see pay attention to what I smell pay attention to what I taste it's the same thing bringing my mind into to my body okay now how do we do this right because when we get those thoughts it's hard to remember to do this right and, and once the stress starts it's kind of too late like it's not just like oh flip the switch by taking a couple of breaths it then takes a few minutes to get you know to 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 get you know back into that place of, of calm and, and of uh, you know homeostasis and, and the, the uh, rest and digest mode right so the key is to, to practice okay practice being in this mode all right so that we're always in this mode so that we don't have have those thoughts that, that we don't allow those thoughts to, to take our mind into those other places to make us afraid right and that's the key so how do we do that right we practice we practice we practice and when we do that and we practice every single day for like 30 or 40 days we can develop habits and once we develop habits then we don't have to worry about it anymore then it becomes just the way that we function Okay, so if you would like to learn some of these practices, I would love to tell them to you. Okay, I would love to teach you how to do this. It's very simple, doesn't take a lot of time, and I would be more than happy to, to help you with it. Okay, all you got to do, drop a comment below, send me a message, send me an email, wherever you're watching this video. Let's get in touch with each other and let's just have a little conversation. Let me kind of run you through what we're talking about and see if we can get you started. All right. I would be more than happy to do that for you. Thanks for listening, everyone. I wish you well. And I'll be back again tomorrow to talk about some of the biases that happen in our mind that create some of this, um, some of this stress, the, the thought, the, the thought based stress that I'm talking about. OK, I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing that with you tomorrow. Wish you well. Thank you very much for listening. Take care.